And now, um, I'd like to introduce Anna Charlton. Other people call her the happiest, luckiest woman in the universe. <laughs> Uh, we've been together 40 years. We did it together. We became vegan together. We work together. We teach together. We write together. I couldn't have done it without her. Anna. All right. As she throws away any notes, because all these good people have said so many important things, I don't need to repeat them. But as Gary just mentioned, the span of time that we've been doing this, um, we do it very differently. And so everyone who's going home, I hope, energized and inspired and thinking, I'm going to go out there and do this stuff. I sit in a lot of audiences as, you know, going to conferences, and I hear people say uh, to this, about the speakers on the stage, that's really good, but I could never do that. And I either think or I say if it's with an earshot, yes, you can. Yes, you could. No, no. And then we've got this panel of wonderful people doing all this great stuff. And I'm hoping that you're hearing something that would appeal to you. But perhaps you're also thinking, I couldn't do that. They're doing that, but I couldn't do that. It's all very well for them. Yes, you can. And yes, you must. This is a social justice movement. And we're all here representing people who can't do it for themselves. I don't just do animal work, I do human rights work. And there are so many vulnerable humans who need a voice to advance their interests. And that's only amplified when we're thinking about the animal situation. They need us. And one thing I remind myself of, because I'm not a natural at this, I talk for a living because I'm a lawyer and I'm a teacher. But there's the luxury of being in a role in that. You put your suit on and you go to court and you play lawyer. I walk in front of an amphitheater of teachers and I'm the professor and it's some of the personality has gone in that. You've got a natural authority because of the role you're playing. But sometimes one on one, talking about things that go right to our heart, that bring all our emotions to the surface, it can be difficult. And I'm not going to take a poll, but I bet you anything, some of the speakers here on the stage today, they had their toes curled up in their shoes when they were talking. And they might have been more nervous than they projected. I always am. But I will leave you with a couple of things that help me get up in the morning and do, do things. And they are two good quotes from an excellent poet called Audre Lorde. And some of you may be uh, familiar with her. She was a black feminist poet. And um, she said, when we speak, we are afraid our words will not be heard or welcomed. But when we're silent, we're still afraid. So it's better to speak. <laughs> the more important one that gave me the proverbial kick in the pants, which I mentioned on Friday and which I need, and I'm sure you will need because you're all going to go out from here, aren't you? Yeah. To do excellent vegan advocacy in your own voice, in your own communities, because that's the, the way we meet and have influence and inspiration about all the world of pre-vegans that are out there for us to talk to. Listen to this. It helps me, perhaps it will help you. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. It's not do it afraid, it's do it because it doesn't matter if you're nervous. First of all, people find it very refreshing to hear about a vegan message from someone who isn't shouting at them. They may have seen a demonstration, they may have come up against someone who's telling them what they're doing wrong in an accusatory manner. Most people are really ready to hear this message. One of the reasons we wrote Eat Like You Care, and heaven knows we wouldn't have anticipated how useful that has become. I am so grateful for that. People come and tell me that was something good to do. That was a good voice. Because it really focused on the fact that people already have the 
the ethical framework in their heads. They're just ready. They're just ready to have that ignited in them. And you can all do it. You can all do it. You go practice. People are usually grateful, enthusiastic, and engaged. And yes, there will, people, will be people who come and talk to you about bacon. But just let it roll off you, roll it off. Families are hard, those people are hard, but there are so many wonderful people to engage in. So I'm going home inspired, I'm going home educated, I'm going to look forward to hearing at the next World Vegan Summit, Bob, about the new group of activists and what they've done, okay?